Hi, everybody. It's Michael Fisher with Pocket Now Weekly. Just before we get started with episode 093, we wanted to let you know about a slight change here. We are going to remove our clean tag from this episode and all episodes going forward. That's not because we want to make the weekly a profanity-laden uh, wasteland of obscenity, but because we feel like it's sort of time to let that go. We take a long time editing out profanity. It, it actually slows down the production of the show quite a bit. And also, it just philosophically, we think we should be able to drop the occasional curse word every so often. So just a heads up, if you listen to this show with young children, or if you yourself are easily offended by profanity, just wanted to give you a little warning. Sorry about the change. If it bothers you, do apologize. And uh, you can cover ears when appropriate. Thanks for understanding. The flagship killer that doesn't want you to settle finally breaks cover. The pioneer of the modern mobile browser shares his story, and Microsoft and Nokia finally consummate their love. We could have a feature segment, but with news this hot, do we really need one? Not with your listener mail, which we're answering later. All that and much more on episode 093 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once a week audio podcast where we discuss smartphones, tablets, wearables, and other gadgets you wished you had when you were a kid. From Boston, Massachusetts, I'm your host, Michael Fisher, editorial director at Pocket Now. Later on, we'll be joined by Chiefs News editor uh, Stephen Shank to help us answer the mail. And as usual, we've got Mid Atlantic representative senior editor Taylor Martin on the line from North Carolina. Good day, you testy man, you. Garble, garble. And also, uh, more importantly, no offense, Taylor, probably offense, Matt Taylor, a special guest for today's podcast, the first ever guest the Pocket Now Weekly ever had, in fact. Back after a long while, Helsinki's own Stefan Constantinescu of the Voicemail Podcast, and now Tab Dump. How are you, Stefan? Pretty good. Drinking some scotch. Scotch, yeah. scotch, scotch. Sco- I love scotch. Scotch in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> are you in it, your Aquajet 9000 enjoying scotch and, and steak? That's the only way you can live on Friday. Yeah, that is entirely true. What time is it on your Friday over there right now? It is 10 to 10. It is 10 to, it is 9.50 in the evening? Yes. Heavens to Betsy. Well, it's 2.50 in the afternoon over here, and uh, we still have a lot of work day ahead of us, Taylor and I, but I can understand why you wanted to get started, because you need to have your weekend kick off. You do. <laughs> I don't. I have very little work ahead of me. Is that true? I that thought you were, you were at the beginning process of penning a review. Um, I'm also only pinned in for half a day mm. that you're encroaching on. Well, actually, yeah, I didn't say this is, this is the problem with not looking at the schedule before you schedule the weekly. Yeah, um, it's cool. So I'm not going to talk about how busy we've all been. I, whenever I used to listen to tech podcasts, I always thought that was the most unoriginal way to kick off a show. But now I understand. So busy, man. Right. But now I understand the impulse because not only is it true, you actually are busier every single week. But the busier you get, the less creative you're able to be (laughs) with uh, a hobby like the podcast. And it's like, oh, my God, I can't talk about anything. But so I want to have Stefan talk for like 20 seconds because the last time you came on, it was like episode 50 or something. And Tab Dump didn't exist. So do you want to plug that real quick? Do you want to talk about what Tab Dump is? Because I think it's pretty cool, and I like it. Sure. So this is actually a great segue because you're just complaining about I don't have any time for anything. My creative output, it just drops yeah. like a stone. And <clears throat> I have two conflicting interests. So I want to know everything that's happening in the tech world, in the world world, in Ukraine, South Korea, whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to sit on my ass all day in front of a computer. So I wake up in the morning and I open up my RSS reader and it takes me about, (laughs) it takes me about five hours to clear it out. Wow. And then uh, from that clearing out, I create a list of tabs that I think are the most important items of the day. Uh, split up into two sections. You got the tech news and the world news. And I publish that pretty much about the same time every day, um, 12 o'clock. I, w- I wake up u- usually at like 6 o'clock or 5.45. And, uh, and then after that, I close my laptop 
I shove it in the closet, and I go out into the world. <laughs> you are a big fan of disconnecting. I like it because occasionally yes. I'll, I'll miss your like vacation announcements, and then at three weeks will go by. I'm like, where in the God's name is what the bit? What is happening on my Twitter feed? <laughs> oh right, he left the internet for like a month, and then he. I must. Then you. Come I must back say that I'm you, terribly jealous, though. I'm I'm usually jealous of it too, and until you come back and you tweet something, you know, really, really <laughs> very and yeah, horrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, no. You guys should really get away from the internet. I'm I'm so much better now. I'm like, shut up, man. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> yeah, but you said you woke up in the morning and I had the the words that I thought that were going to follow that were feeling like P. Diddy. And <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, but I, I heard I wake up in the morning. Like P. Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> This is where my mind is right now, Tell just to it. preface you're, this entire podcast. We are so trashed that we are we are reciting Kesha songs. Um, somebody <laughs> Who's somebody, Kesha? A Kesha is a... Um, a I'm w- fucking with me. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, I was like, well, in Helsinki, maybe she's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I'm so fried that so- somebody, um, somebody on YouTube left a comment talking about... Um, <laughs> How I look. Did you see this before? I, I saw this. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to find it right now because I don't actually remember what his title was. Oh, yeah. No idea what this means, but I LOL'd. His comment says, this guy <laughs> this guy always looks like he just got blasted in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. what, was that your Galaxy S5 review? Or no, it was the, the S5 comparison? versus Icon, the one where I filmed the host segment at like 10 at night after <laughs> after 10 hours of filming. And uh, yeah. You crazy Yankees and your liberal ways <laughs> getting blasted in the face every day. <laughs> blasted in the face. <laughs> Well, we're <laughs> let's 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 do a new time mark right now. Let's get into <laughs> announcements, shall we? First of all, I am saying something here that I don't think Taylor knows, though he might, and Stefan, you don't know, but I don't think you care, but uh, some people will, probably because this might become a collector's item, I don't know. We are doing at Pocket Now. This will be announced officially on Monday um, and teased in the unboxing today. We're doing a giveaway of the Nokia X, which is um, so much fun. Negri Electronics provided us with a Nokia X. It's a green one. I haven't even opened the box yet because the Galaxy S5 has been dominating my life, but we're giving one away uh, after we review it. I don't know if we're giving it the full review tray. I don't know what we're doing on it yet, but we're, we're doing coverage on it, and then after that we're giving it away. So if you're into strange Android phones that are built for emerging markets and look like Windows phones but aren't, hey, get ready for it. It's going to be fun. Do you see those uh, out there? <laughs> in Finland? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's distracting. Not right? really. Uh, Finland has usually, if I see someone on the street, chances are they have an iPhone. If they, do, if they don't have an iPhone, they have a Samsung. If they don't have a Samsung, they have a Windows phone. Wow. So Windows phone is the third most often cited thing you see on the street in terms of smartphones? Oh, yeah. Constantly. Wow. I think I feel like we you told us this on the last show, and I was equally um, skeptical, but I shouldn't be. Of course, you're in Helsinki, the the seat of power and of uh, Nokia, or well, used now, to be. But yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> as of today, that's changed. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, <clears throat> the return of a, a, a popular segment at Pocket Now is at hand next week or the week after. Our own Joe Levi, the Android guy, is bringing back his power user segment. So if you don't know how to use your smartphone well enough, and trust me. You don't, compared to Joe Levi. Uh, you should tune in for that because he's going to teach you all kinds of things in that soothing voice of his. And we've had a lot of listener mail pieces asking for Joe's return to the weekly, and I really hope to make that happen soon. So, in the meantime, his power user segment is coming back. So, you should look forward to that. Taylor Martin recently re reviewed a device while I was reviewing a G device. Taylor, how'd that after the buzz go for the Moto G? Uh, it was nice. It was a very oddly easy video to shoot and and to script um because it's still just such a great deal so, what's, what's the price on the moto g these days retail st- still 180 unless you get it i guess through a carrier or through one of those shoddy prepaid things through yeah. like verizon or something speaking where they phones, discount it even further speaking of phones you see on the street i think i saw <laughs> a, a couple moto g's over the course of the past two weeks or so so it's we, the phone i rock i mean are you serious I, yeah Really? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. When did you get a Moto G and why? Okay, so I bought a Samsung Galaxy Note 2 in February of last year. Okay. 
Uh, and then I sold it while it was still worth something um, in October because I just got tired of it. Um, you sold it and, right after the Note 3 debuted. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was really excited about that phone, but then I read your re- review of it, and then I saw all the videos of it, and, and then I played with it in the store, and I'm like, this Galaxy Note 3 is a real pile. Um, <laughs> uh, minority, minority opinion, but I understand. I <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm going to sell my Galaxy Note 2, uh, keep the cash, purchase a smartphone that will get me through the day just barely, mm-hmm. uh, so that when the iPhone 6 comes out, I can purchase that. Ah, okay. And uh, I've been using the phone exclusively since about, I want to say, November, and um, I love it. It's great. Exclusively using the Moto G for six months, basically. And we, see, that's great. This is exactly why we do After the Buzz to see how well things age. And I think Taylor sort of echoes your, your statements because, you know, I get worried about the thing because. Uh, you know, we'll review a flagship, and it's great out of the box, but with Android, you know, and whatever they're calling bit rot these days happens after a few months, and you come back to it in four months, and it's like, oh, wow, this thing is a dog, and it's dragging ass all over the place, and I <sighs> hate using it. And I was worried about the Moto G going down that path, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. Absolutely not. And, of course, I have to preface this by saying I review phones as well. So it wasn't my exclusive, exclusive phone, but when it was time to send back the hardware, my SIM card went back into the G and I was right on my way. Wow. wow. I, I think I could use one and that'd be okay with it. Like you one do. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah. Like when I, that was one of my favorite editorials I wrote this year. I think it was this year, whenever the hell it was. Uh, Last year. Using the, yeah, using the Moto G for an afternoon. I, I was, it was just crazy walking around town consistently being surprised by, oh, wow, I can do this. And, oh, wow, it does it pretty well. And, hey, I don't hate this. Really cool. Interesting to go back to the Moto X afterwards, too, because in a way, the fact that the X is thinner makes it slightly less comfortable. The G is just a really cool phone. I'm glad to hear it's aging well. Yeah. Hmm. Not at all, actually. Yeah. I, I'm a little surprised the price hasn't come down yet, considering Moto's stated aspirations to make a $50 phone. It's something absurdly cheap, but... Well, they, they also were only making, like, $10 per unit on this phone. So... <laughs> is, that, is that how it works out? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so, a good point. No. So dropping the price anymore is kind of... <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's 180 bucks. I mean, that's a steal, I think. No, it, it oh, really it is. is. But totally you, is. the thing is, I always think of the G in the same, like, mental breath as the Lumia uh, 520 and 521 and 525. That's yeah. half the price, though. It's less than half the price. They're, like, 50 they bucks. Started- they started at the same price. They both started at 180 the, originally. The, the Lumia 520 started at 180 No kidding. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I did research for the, the review and, for the, after the post. Oh, good for you. I do that sometimes. <laughs> I'm glad You're you doing did your that. job. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> big, big pat on the back, bro. No, I, you know, I, I, I just always think of the 520 sitting on store shelves, no contract required, 50 bucks. you walk out with this phone that is quite freaking capable for a $50 phone. And that I think, yes, yes, you have to like put up with Windows Phone if you don't want a uh, if you're if you're not a Windows Phone lover. But that's still an unbelievable deal. And to me, it kind of dulls the sheen of the Moto G a little bit at that 180 price point, which is why I think I was asking if it, the price would come down. But I will say that after using the M8 for a few weeks mm-hmm. and then going to the Moto G, you can actually visually notice the difference in clock speed without using them side by side. So I can see a visual difference in how much slower apps load or the application door opens oh, or notification shade drops down. It's just it's just interesting. It's not terrible, but it's noticeable. Yeah. Well, as as you know, smartphones as more and more parity develops between smartphones, especially between smartphones across ranges, I think it's it's interesting in and of itself to see differences. You know, where it's like you don't have to be doing a side-by-side comparison with where like, let's tap on these apps at the same time, see which one opens faster. Oh, that's the worst. Milliseconds. I hate it. Ugh. I could. That was ugh, ugh. Hate that. Anyway, um, I wanted to say to you, Taylor, that I also have been using a One M8 recently, as meaning this morning I moved back into the One M8 for a second. Uh, because I've been using the Galaxy S5 all week. The Galaxy S5 review is up at Pocket Now, finally. And Worst Stefan, review ever. ever. 
Right. Only if you can. Only if you count the comments on the article. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, what? I yeah. was going somewhere with that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, man. You, you eight point six. That's a horrible score. What a what was, a crappy phone. Those comments are brutal. <laughs> They're pretty nasty. <laughs> this is why I don't have comments on my site because honestly, I don't care what you think. Really, <laughs> I'm going to so read. You Michael's. hate me. Email me. <laughs> That's the thing. Every time I uh, every time I th- I go down that path, I start thinking like, wow, what if we just like popular science did and eliminated comments? But you know, there are so many good ones that. That that get really? lost. There there really, really are. No, there really are. There's there's some good feedback from our community, and it's like it's nice. And you know, sometimes, gonna... quite often, actually, I'll learn something where um, somebody was like, um, "Hey, you can use the uh, you can scan three fingers at a time into the fingerprint scanner, and that'll increase its uh, accuracy." Or rather, one finger three times. You use all three slots. I'm like, okay, that's a dirty hack. A, B, it doesn't change the way the uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's a crappy feature, but C, <laughs> I didn't know that, so thank you, and I'll try it. And so it's, it's also that like camera's that, better that than the 1020s. <laughs> right. What? <Yeah. laughs> it's a comment. Uh, yeah. Can I just read your featured comment? Uh, no, it's just. It's, I it's want to read this. There's it's nothing. Hilarious. There's nothing special about it. It's just, hey guys, don't freaking. If you if you want to disagree with our conclusion, fine, but don't don't like troll out the old bias BS like you know whatever. Um, Basically, he's saying if you step out of line and call me out, I will swing my band hammer and hit you in the face. I will blast you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the band hammer, the the one the one like refuge of solace. And then some dude some dude actually came out of the woodwork and was like, "Hey, thanks for deleting my comment. Bias site is bias." I'm like, "Who is this?" And I look at his post history, and his post history consists entirely of like. Like trolling on Samsung articles and um, making fun of Indian people. And I'm like, wow, you're a great contribution to the world, and I just banned him forever. It, 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 those are the things that give me pleasure. But anyway, none of that's worth talking about. The Galaxy S5 review is up. The Galaxy S5 is a very important phone. It's out. Stefan, you spent some, some time with it. Your impressions. T- to share your thoughts with us. Oh, yeah. So um, today is uh, Friday. April 25th, uh, I received my Galaxy S5 last Thursday. Okay. So I've had it for about eight days now, and uh, I'm really torn. Um, you actually uploaded a video that says uh, it was something along the lines of Samsung G- Galaxy S5 versus Galaxy S4. It's better and worse. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I would say it's worse. So, worse than the S4, like overall? Overall. I think I'm the only person who does not like the uh, the uh, version of TouchWiz on the Galaxy S5. I find you it prefer conf- the old one? I prefer the one on the S4. Wow. Yeah, I think I you mean, are the only person. You're right. <laughs> it is hideous. I am not saying that it's pretty. But at least on the S4, I understood where everything was and the options were pretty clearly labeled. On the S5, it's just like, I'm going to throw them anywhere I want. I don't give a <laughs> crap if you understand this or not. Um, like what? What's out of place? Because I mean, they left Are you kidding me? The it's skeleton like it, pretty much. Are you talking about the settings menu? Yes. Oh, it is yeah. disastrous. No, the settings menu is hilarious. But it, yeah. it's all ob- – so if you're not familiar with the settings menu on the S5, what happens is you hop in and there, it actually looks pretty cool. It's got all those circular icons, whatever. You scroll Only through you them. would call it cool. I, I think it does look cool. It looks like a New York subway station with all the, like, the, the numbered stops and stuff. But as you're scrolling through it, you realize that Samsung has actually – Split everything into categories, yes, but it's duplicated entries across categories. <laughs> so where yeah. the, there are actually only about 15 options, there are 50 on the page because there's so many duplications. But, Stefan, what, what completely like makes it great for me is that you don't even have to do any of that. You just tap the spyglass up top and type in what you're looking for, and bam, you're there. I think that was a really cool addition. I don't know about you, but that search feature is slow as hell for me. Oh, really? Like, yes. I will tap S Finder, and um, I'm doing this live, and I type in battery, mm-hmm. and I type it in, and it's 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 just spinning circle icon, spinning circle icon. Okay, finally found battery no settings. No way. Are you using yeah. the Exynos or the Snapdragon one? Uh, I'm using the Snapdragon one. No freaking way. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. I didn't have that issue. I just start typing in and it goes. But as we know from, well, smartphones in general, but I think specifically TouchWiz running devices, 
they they can vary wildly between units. Is it, you know, I, I can't – whenever I'm shooting a video and I'm trying to replicate – problems that the phone threw in normal usage, generally it won't do it. It'll be like, uh, no, I'm going to behave really well on camera for you right now. And I'm like, oh, great. So I have to like fake this error because <laughs> you don't want to do the thing you do all the time because a camera's on you. It's like the reverse of the demo gods thing. But uh, anyway, so yeah, yeah. So, so, but overall you, you find the S4 better and some of that's got to be good to be the hardware, right? Absolutely. Um, the screen the highlight feature is that it gets really, really dim so that if you're uh, reading in the evening, you can actually read and not hurt your eyes, yeah, which is awesome. fantastic, yeah. except for the fact that the capacitive keys have the world's brightest <laughs> LEDs behind oh, them. My God, so you're so right. You can't see the damn screen because the capacitive keys are right in your face. And every um, time you touch the screen, the capacitive keys wake back up. Yes, it's for horrible. For six seconds or three seconds. And the only way to get around that is to turn them off completely, and then you can't see them. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why didn't I mention that in the review? That's a good call. I, I'm, I've always been bothered by that, and I should have said that in the review. The, uh, the, the Find 7A, mm -hmm. the, the LEDs for the, no, or the capacitive buttons are, like, barely there. Pure, oh, like, really? You can it's barely the see problem? them. You can barely see them with the lights off. <laughs> uh, see, I hate that. That that reminds me of back in the day with dumb phones when like when blue LEDs first came out. Oh and yeah. When you bought like a new dumb phone, you wanted it to have the blue backlighting. If it had the green, it was like, oh, this is no, this is whack. I don't want this. Like dim green backlighting behind the numeric keys. Those were the days. I liked it better when it was simple. Anyway, go ahead, <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> um, the camera is absolutely amazing. I yeah, love it. It's incredible. Um, the build quality. So. The back of the phone, the quote-unquote uh, Band-Aid cover, mm. I actually really like it. But it's ruined by the sides of the phone, which look just absolutely hideous. Are you talking it's, about it's the fake metal? Like the, my, my girlfriend called it the, the edge of a diner stool, like a 1950s <laughs> era kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, it just looks absolutely hideous. <laughs> um, the, uh, the charging flap, I'm not crazy about it. I love the fact that this phone charges really fast. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps. Is and it, um, I forgot, yeah. is it Quick Charge 2.0? I think so, yeah, because it has a Snapdragon 801. Right. Um, yeah. uh, I don't like the brand new multitasking uh, user interface. Oh, I mean, I really like that. You don't like the, the, the pains? The one that's in stock Android works completely fine, and it does not stutter at all. Um, oh. What else can I? Yeah, no, say that's about I mean, touch was always slows everything down. But I like the fact that they've replaced the menu key with the multitasking key because if you, the quickest way to irritate me is to force me to press and hold on anything. And yeah. I love multitasking. And when I'm when I have to press and hold on the home button to get that menu to come up, I hate life. It's it's like a speed bump. <laughs> it's it's putting a speed bump right in the middle of the user experience with something that you should be using all the time. And um, you know, it, just having a button there makes so much more sense. I'm really I'm really glad they did that. Uh, and then the final thing, because I've been talking for way too much, it's the okay. fingerprint scanner. Yeah. Um, I've had it turned on for the entire time I've had the phone. And it is possessed by Satan himself. <laughs> <laughs> so some days it will work flawlessly, absolutely perfectly. It will swipe every swipe just fine on the first time. Other days, for reasons I don't understand, I'll swipe five times. I'll be like, uh, uh, please swipe faster. Uh, please use the center of the key. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Go from I don't top know what to I'm bottom. Doing. No match yeah, found. It, yeah, exactly. And... And I'm like, okay, uh, am I retarded or something? Like, what happened? Um, and this alternates every few days between working wonderfully and working horribly. And just this morning, for some strange reason, I unlocked the phone with my fingerprint and the phone reboot. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. There, there is definitely a significant lag about one every 15 times when you go to unlock it with a fingerprint. And the lock screen has to decide whether it's going to obey or not. Like there's some kind of communication between the sensor and the software that, that is buggy. Because, yeah, every so often you get that two or three second pause. I've never had it reboot, but I've had it. No, actually, no, that's not true. I've had the same issue. I'm going to look at my notes to confirm this. But that is creepy, isn't it? 
Yeah, and uh, just for the record, I have three fingerprints um, registered in this thing. You can only have three, which is some sort of stupid artificial uh, lim- I hate that. limitation. I cannot stand that. I got my right thumb and my right index finger and my left thumb and whatever. Some days, again, it works fine. Other days, it's like, okay, this is useless. Yeah, I found my note. Uh, my note on this, which made it, it was tempered a little bit for the review because I'd spent more time with it. But this is my first impression. Right below a note that Taylor will appreciate, uh, vibe motor. Brrr. Oh, that's the worst part of the phone. <laughs> I'm oh so my God. glad you're on the same page as us with this. Like, it, it, oh, God. It Every, sounds... All the listeners are so tired of us talking about this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's but the, the worst Samsung part of every Galaxy Samsung phone. S5, yeah. when the phone vibrates, it sounds like a tiny fart. Yeah. <laughs> but like, Just, a, like, seriously. But uh, like, you know, th- that escapes from a guy driving a bulldozer. Like, it's, 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 it's huge. It, 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 you get a hangout message that's like, hey, come over here. And it's like, Brrr. and it does that for every hangout message, everything in an IM conversation. By default, all the vibrations are set on, and it's just ridiculously stupid. But, I don't think we have the same phone because I don't have a very strong vibrate thing in there at, at all. Yeah, so I can hear the vibration, and it sounds like... How should I describe this? It sounds like when you're over your girlfriend's parents' house and you ate way too much broccoli and you have to fart, <laughs> so you're squeezing your legs really hard, but then all of a sudden it's like, you know. Oh, you that's what it sounds no, like. You've got a you have a defective unit, friend, because Taylor uh, and I, if if Taylor and I were to engage in a hangouts conversation on on two Galaxy S fives, we would sh- shake the eastern seaboard from its foundations. It's, it's you guys have ridiculous. the have the Galaxy S5 for the states. I have the unlocked uh, European phone, so I don't know what the hell's up. Uh, I don't know what's up either. But it, it did, my note on the lock screen behavior is lock screen behavior very janky with fingerprint sensor. Several screw ups requiring a restart. Fingerprint Oof. sensor is also total shit. It sucks, <laughs> and anyone who says otherwise is a weirdo. I, wow. I don't I don't think that's true, but that was my initial response. That's my my personal note to myself. What is your power animal? <laughs> <laughs> you need to know. calm down. I, I know. <laughs> You're right. I do. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, that's the Galaxy S5. It's, mine is in the other room. I was going to try, Stefan, to correlate some of the things you were saying, and I realized that uh, I can't do that because I left it in the other room. And the reason I did that is because, not because I hate it, I have no strong feelings about this phone. I think it is um, going to make a lot of people very happy. I'm very glad it's waterproof. I'm very pleasantly surprised by the camera, and I think the software is a good sign of nice things to come in the future, but the phone inspires no strong emotions from me whatsoever. From from front to back, I am completely vanilla on the thing, and um, it'll be nice to kind of spend some time without it. But we're going to do one more feature on it next week, which I'm going to talk about sometime else. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, while I'm taking a note, I think we're going to jump into the first news category of the week. <laughs> Hilariously, 30 minutes into the podcast, we get to the news. And that is a Windows phone. What's that? <laughs> it's a phone with a How big many... window on it. I don't know. <laughs> How many times have I asked that? <laughs> I like your, I like, I, those are, that's fun to me. I kind of like, like when you do that. We got to talk about this giant news story of the week. Microsoft completes Nokia acquisition. It was getting to the point where I didn't think I'd ever see this headline because the Chinese regulatory uh, agencies were were holding things up for a while and then we were waiting for a whole bunch of other stuff, but it's actually happened. No, Microsoft completes the Nokia acquisition today. The Redmond-based giant has published an official press release saying the mobile capabilities and assets they bring, Nokia, will advance our transformation. Together with our partners, we remain focused on delivering innovation more rapidly in our mobile-first, cloud-first world. <laughs> Guys, what is a cloud-first world? Do we know? Um, something it's... that Apple said was among us several years ago. Oh, okay. It's where you go to Colorado and you get really high and <laughs> <laughs> you're a cloud-based world. Cloud-first world, buddy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the weird PR boilerplate aside, this is a massive development. We, uh, the, the majority of Nokia's devices and services group now falling under Microsoft's umbrella officially. A lot of changes going to take place, no doubt. We're finally 
I think we can finally say safely say that we've seen the last <laughs> of Nokia branded Windows phones. It seems like every so often, every few weeks, we would say, "Oh, is this the, is this going to be the last Nokia Lumia?" And then another one would come out. It's like, no, it's not. So uh, the new ones are going to be branded. I think this is reliable, guys. Right? Microsoft Mobile. Is that right? That uh, hurts me. Yeah, <laughs> Stefan, are we in, are we still in rumor territory on that or what? Okay, so that's going to be the name of the holding company that's going to purchase the Nokia assets in Finland. As to what the final phones will be called, that's a toss-up because uh, we don't know yet. So, interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing that uh, Microsoft Mobile is the is the kind of going to might be the general device name if they go with it as a brand. But the branding on the phones will be like Microsoft Lumia is what we're is what the conjecture is from some camps here. So that would be horrible. Uh, yeah, you, you know, but I am really glad and I hope this holds true that Microsoft resisted the urge to slap the Windows brand on yet another thing that could be awesome, but would be destroyed by the Windows brand like Windows Phone has suffered under for years and years and years. But there seems to be a lot of debate in the comments here. There seems to be a lot of kind of divided opinion about whether the Nokia brand needed to go. And this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about because personally, I think it's a mistake. I think the Nokia brand is the best thing Windows Phone had going for it. I don't think the Microsoft brand is really speaks to mobile consumers today. Uh, I think the Nokia brand is old, yes, but it's it, it calls it conjures up connotations of positivity, of good memories, of first cell phones, and reliability. And I really, really, really think they should have struck a licensing agreement to use the Nokia brand rather they than have. the Microsoft one. Well, yeah, but not they're not going to do it, though, right? We don't know. Honestly, we don't know because we haven't seen uh, – I can't say his name and I hate myself for it. Satya, Satya Nadella? Yes, we haven't seen him announce a phone himself. Like, this is the new whatever from us. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. um, we don't know yet. Sure. Microsoft Mobile sure. Windows powered Windows Phone Surface Phone. <laughs> Surface <Probably>. Mac One. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm kind Whatever of... it is, it's going to be painful and my ears will bleed and my yes. fingers will hate typing it every time. Yeah. This is kind of like the Find 7A. I, every time I type those words, Oppo Find 7A, I always type F I N A 7A. Every time. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> so uh, I want to follow up on this Microsoft Mobile thing. Forbes is reporting that Microsoft will be using the Microsoft Mobile brand name. Because, uh, yeah, this is what we heard before. Nokia is retaining its own brand name for itself so that if it wants to reenter the mobile device market with a new offering, one not based on Windows, it can do so with its, uh, with its highly popular brand in their part of the world. So where does uh, PureView go? Which, which part of the... The garbage. That... <laughs> Which <laughs> side of the fence does that fall into? I think Pure, uh, PureView has some pretty powerful equity, for, brand equity, I think, for how old it is, or at least in, in tech circles. I think it's a well-respected brand name. Um, but Yeah, but I, I, I tech circles are tiny, though. That's true. No, I know. And and who knows if Microsoft will eventually hold on to that or not. Forbes just threw a uh, timed pop-up ad in my face, so I'm closing that tab. But it's a cool story. Go to Forbes. Um yeah, I, I don't know. So much is unknown at this point. But after Microsoft's moves with naming Windows Phone in the first place and uh, its, its actions since then on it from a branding perspective, I, I just don't have confidence that these changes are immediately going to be good. I really wish the Nokia brand uh, had been held on to for the for Windows Phone offerings. And, Stefan, maybe you're right. Maybe there's something I'm obvious I'm missing, but I just... I don't know. Is well, how, what's the what's the like mood over there? You're in it. You're you're in the city. You know where, where <laughs> a lot of this stuff is 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 taking place. So what's this? What's it like from your perspective? So let me rewind to when the acquisition was actually announced. Yeah, I six months ago. Yes. Um, I was in the gym, and of course, in, in all gyms, there's a ton of televisions, and it was like everybody just stopped. Everybody stopped working out, running, whatever, and was just staring at the television like, what the hell just happened? Wow. Um, and now that it's finally closed, nobody here cares any anymore. I mean— Like, uh, like nobody among the general populace? 
um, I mean, I spoke with a couple of friends of mine, and they're just like, yeah, it's Windows Phone. The Nokia is gone. I just want the iPhone 6 already. Wow. You know? So that brand is done. Um, what's really confusing me on Twitter is that everyone is saying, oh, well, rest in peace, Nokia, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, Microsoft is a company that will try really hard to pull this off. Why are we treating it like, okay, the company is gone? Well, um, I, I, I think because of what I was talking about before with the brand. I mean, you know, the Nokia brand is crucially important to the development of the of, of mobile. I mean, it's it's one of the anchor points of the entire mobile world. And the fact that it is most likely not going to be used in a in a very prominent position going forward with Microsoft strategy is, I think, really sad to some people. You know, Nokia it was is. the largest mobile manufacturer for what fourteen years, yeah, like over a decade, certainly, right? Yeah. So it it has this big prominent position, and and now it's being kind of retired by virtue of the. And yes, the acquisition is good for for Microsoft certainly, and it's going to be good for components that once called themselves Nokia. And I really think that the the bright days are ahead. I think we're going to see some great hardware still, but there's something very special about a name, you know. I mean, and you like to see the positive in everything. No, I really don't. I'm. I'm <laughs> you do. No, no, no. Actually, uh, you know, from from a normal person's perspective, I'm actually quite cynical and and, and <laughs> negative a lot of the time. The, the different sailor is that next to you. I am a shining beacon of positivity and light. Yes. This is true. This is very true. God, black hole. Anyway. Um. If I had to describe myself, I would say I'm like the nihilists in uh, yes. – what's that film with the, with the dude? Oh, my God. Oh. I'm blanking out. Yeah, uh, The Big Lebowski. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Wow, it's late. <laughs> too much scotch. Too scotch, much scotch, scotch. <laughs> you know, I, you well. That's why I like you because you you kind of refuse to get carried away by any of the um, the, the, the the glitz and the, um, the the glee and and such. And you, in fact, it, with regards to Windows Phone, I think you've always been kind of a uh, uh, hardcore skeptic. Isn't that true? Every once in a while, I want to try a Windows phone because I feel that I can't talk adequately about Windows phone without trying one, obviously. I'm not mm -hmm. just going to talk out of my butthole. Sure. Um, and Mike it has... That. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a platform that has honestly progressed uh, very well, but it's not progressing fast enough and... Windows Phone 8.1, yeah, it looks crazy, it looks cool, but by the time Windows Phone 8.1 hardware hits, we're going to have iOS 8, and we're going to have Android 4. Point, who knows what, 6, 5. Um, this so. is why I value your perspective, because I, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Weeks ago, when we did our Windows Phone 8.1 review, I posted it. I stand by my review. I really think that it's a hugely important step forward for, for the company, uh, but... I had not stopped to consider exactly what you said on Twitter, like, and exactly what you said just now. Yes, this is awesome, but by the time it drops, we're going to see the next level developments from the competitors, and that's a huge consideration. And speed has never been one of Microsoft's strong points in terms of this OS. Uh, it, it always seems to be a bit behind. So that worries me to, to a degree. But one of the nice things about it is about the platform is um, because of its third place status, no doubt, because of the strong feeling of unity uh, of the community, people do, <laughs> people do not want to wait for stuff. Stephen Shank has a great headline. Windows Phone users hate waiting. Million plus install 8.1 dev preview. This is the kind of community stuff that I really like about Windows Phone because the, you, people will rally behind it. Uh, we have a Lumia Icon versus Galaxy S5 video that I just posted. It already has a ton of comments for a for a brand new shell post on a Friday, which is usually a really slow day. The traffic is is really good. Like the Windows Phone community should not be underestimated. And while I often criticize them for being very harsh in any kind of um, as a block, I mean, uh, to any kind of negative feedback on the platform, it's a very passionate community, and I think. It's. I think Microsoft knows that, so I think that might be the bright point going forward. I don't know. I'm actually <clears throat> quite hungry right now, so I'm thinking about food. And <laughs> Windows Phone, to me, is okay. the store brand cereal. 
Hmm. Like it's oh. it's not a you mean like down below offensive? the boxes in in, in the bags. Exactly. Ah. So it tastes almost as good as the good stuff. Mm. And it's a lot cheaper. Uh, mm. And it's not offensive. If you eat it, you will not die. It is nutritious. Huh. You know, all right, it so is good. I'll go with you on that. It's, uh, it's not cereal for me. But when I was in college, you know, I'm a big fan of Kraft macaroni and cheese. Uh, mm. To the degree that I used to put it in my Twitter profile, I think that was one of my three things. I was like big fan of Star <laughs> Trek, Boston, and macaroni and cheese, and oh, wow. so I adore it. But in college, I of course didn't have enough money for the brand name stuff, so I, my roommate and I invested in. I think they were twenty five cent boxes. Yeah, they were twenty five cent boxes of macaroni et fromage. Uh, <laughs> this like store brand macaroni and cheese that was English on one side and French on the other with these um, <laughs> like animated uh, character cheese characters on the box. And uh, I didn't like it as much at first, but I really got used to it. And it got to the point where I, I, just, I came to prefer it, even though many called it inferior. So I see what For you're me, saying. For yeah, me, it's yeah. kind of like made-to-order sushi and then going to Harris Teeter and getting that oh. box sushi that they've already made yeah, Harris, that's, it, that's what Teeter. it is for me. That's actually, Harris Teeter is where I started to go once I could afford the Kraft macaroni and cheese again. Yeah, because Harris everything Teeter's at Harris Teeter is store. more expensive. Yeah, but, be, but also it's not, you know, farm fresh. It's a it's a better store. Anyway, enough about mid Atlantic grocery chains. <laughs> <laughs> this week in Albertsons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that's sort of the news in Windows Phone. Obviously, the Microsoft Nokia stuff is just going to be kicking out news left and right. I feel like we're going to be talking about this stuff a whole lot. And Nokia, you know, for all the sadness of that retired, semi retired brand, that's the best way I can put it. There's, they really went out on a, on a very high note. The devices that Nokia put out toward the end of its existence in the form we know it are some of the best it ever did. The icon is gorgeous. Yeah. I, I, it, you know, Taylor, you called it the best Windows phone ever. I got a review unit so that I could rebut your contention because I didn't believe you. It, I think it is. I mean, it's a great, great device. Um, While the Lumia 930 was being announced, mm -hmm. I emailed like five of my former colleagues because I used to work for Nokia Disclosure, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> I was like, please send me a 930. It looks awesome. Like, I really want to try it out. So, yeah, I'm, I, am, I am with you on that. I was just going to ask if you were getting a 930. And, yeah, I just – I highly recommend spending some time with it because it's it's been we, – we had one sent to us from Verizon after we had to give ours back to Nokia. Uh, one of those is featured in the latest review, and it's just what a what a good product, what a nice kind of third, fourth, or fifth act Nokia had after sort of coming back from the cusp of death to yes to do something completely different to alienate a lot of people by relegating Symbian to the back burner and stuff. But I think these some of these moves were really necessary, and I think some great products came out of it. And I still love my 1020 too. So. Hmm. You know, it's a bittersweet day, and I'm sure we could talk much more about it, but we do have to get to the rest of the news. Unless you guys have have another thought on Windows Phone, shall we move into Android? Sure. Oh, show. Sure. Let's do that. Taylor, you have some – you've been quiet, so I kind of want to get your opinion on, on this one plus one situation because this is being touted as the flagship <laughs> killer of the year. And, I, gentlemen, I, I want to hear from both of you. I want to know – why this phone is worth getting excited about and why I should wait in line to buy one. Well, I think the biggest thing, we talked about this a lot yesterday or for a short while yesterday, I should say. Um, and one of the biggest things for me is that this phone is selling specs. So, yes, yeah. the price is great. Uh, $299 or $349 for what you get. It's great. But we have gone over it so many times. Specifications are not everything. Mm -hmm. And that's why I can't necessarily get behind it as being the flagship killer. Um, but what it does can be mean? I like, flagship killer. Yeah. I don't know. But I can see it being an alternative to the Nexus 5. And I think that's the biggest point here is that the Nexus 5 for the five months it's been around has been the best value phone on the market. So you have the Moto X, you have the Nexus 5, you have the Moto G. The Moto X and the Nexus 5, now that the Moto X has dropped in price, they're both really, really good value phones. The Moto G is a budget phone. Uh, still a lot of great value there, but you get more bang for your buck out of the Nexus 5, the Moto X. Um, 
this one is right in line with that and it undercuts the price by fifty dollars so in that respect it's killer it's awesome but so many more things go into a phone that make it better and it's running cyanogen i'm not opposed to cyanogen i've used it countless times uh, maybe even hundreds of times just different versions of it but the thing is that Cyanogemod, at least in my experience, has never been extremely stable. It's really good for performance. But I have Cyanogemod, the most recent version, on my Nexus 7, and it randomly reboots dozens of times per day. So, it... Doesn't that go hand-in-hand hand with the offering, though? I mean, they're, they're, they've put together this device that is specifically made to appeal to spec heads, and now they're putting software on it that the spec people are already you know, froth, frothing at the mouth about. And been panting over, so I, I think that the target audience will put up with some of that. Will will put up with reliability issues in exchange for performance, wouldn't you say? I don't know, but to me that also makes it what uh, that also makes it kind of a, a an oxymoron. How is it going to be a flagship killer if it's only going to appeal to a small demographic? Like a flagship, by definition, I would imagine is the phone that a company would want to appeal. To everyone, the masses. So the M8, the Galaxy S5. In that vein, the OnePlus One is not that device. It's a Nexus 5 competitor, not a 1M8 or a Galaxy S5 competitor, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's a reasonable contention. I, I think there's a messaging issue with this flagship, you know, flagship killer. I just think that's something that, that somebody thought sounded cool and they kind of rolled with it. I rather like their other tagline, never settle, which is a much clearer message to me. It's like, you want the best of the best? Here, take it. And also you're going to pay a, a less than fair price for it, which is interesting to me. I don't even know how they swing that. But, Stefan, what are your thoughts on the on the thing? Is this a phone that gets you, you know, aggro about the face? Um, I can't wait to get blasted. Um, <laughs> okay, so you as a phone manufacturer have to earn my trust. And I don't know who OnePlus is. They have shipped zero phones. Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak as to the quality of their Cyanogen mod install, but I know that uh, Sasha Segan from PC Mag, he actually got some hands on time with the uh, one plus one times two times four. <laughs> and he said it crashes. It's laggy. The camera is kind of terrible. I understand that it's not going to ship for a month, but that that's not an excuse. Um so, isn't, isn't it though? Isn't that an excuse? If it's going to ship in a month, it shouldn't <laughs> yeah. be that that horrible. Yeah. Um, no, no, and yeah. Um, honestly, it's just their PR is insane. They are the company that told all the press outlets like, oh, can you please call their phone a flagship killer? Like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> and then, as you said, they're, they're all specs and specs don't mean a damn thing. They don't mean anything. Um, we've reached that threshold, I think, three years ago or like two years ago where specs were really important. But now it's like everything comes with top of the line, everything. Everything does. Um, and their experience, yeah, okay, stock Android kind of. But uh, the Nexus 5 is a phone that everybody loves. It's already on sale. And you know it, it will receive support straight from Google. So why would you want this thing? I think you want this thing. Like I say, I think this this comes down to interpreting the target audience correctly. These guys a seem group to think of people who want to be elitists. Exactly, but but like that, it's not even that's not even specific enough, Taylor. It's like a group of people that want to be elitists among an already tiny niche of the general population. So you have the general population, and then you have people who are interested in mobile tech. Uh, to the degree that they will read any of our sites, and then you have a subset of that group further who are interested in mobile tech and also need the best specs out there. These are the people who buy the Note 3 despite the fact that they don't need any of the features. They don't maybe even want a big screen and don't give a crap about the S Pen. They just want the, the highest end hardware available. Same thing with people who buy, you know, I, I don't know, you, you can pick devices to, to use as examples, but that is the target customer. And I think OnePlus One thinks that it can make enough phones to satisfy that level of demand. And because the tech press is inherently spec 
I don't want to say biased, but uh, inherently spec focused, despite Stefan me agreeing with you that specs don't mean anything really. Uh, they they certainly do make for nice headlines, and this small component of the community is loud enough that you know it, they're going to get the press from it, and they're going to get a lot of press by saying things like flagship killer and smash your phone to 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 get a chance to buy ours. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. Well, I think they've got a, a really good tactical array setup. I mean, it's it's a very compelling effort. I just think I, I would have a hard time believing that the end product is going to live up to the hype. And honestly, me being a guy who appreciates innovative looking, you know, industrial design, I don't see much in this. OK, three things. Yeah. Number one, they said we're never going to settle. OK, so the phone, you cannot I insert a micro SD card slot. That's gone. And you can't replace the battery. Why? Because they settled. Um, <laughs> yeah. So number two, uh, you can't purchase this thing without receiving an, an invitation. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Even if I want this thing, uh, I can't buy it. Uh, number three, the tech press, all the phones they love sell horribly. That's true. So Moto the X. HTC One M7, mm -hmm. nobody bought it. The Motorola Moto X, nobody bought it. You know, it's 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 sad, really. No, it's so. it's it's a it's a good point. It's one we talk about fairly often. And, and your this first point, Galaxy S5 is going to sell like no man's business. Yeah, it's sell absolutely, like, hot, like hotcakes. Absolutely, even though it's, eh. yeah, like right. <laughs> But no, well, that's a whole other you know ball of wax. I don't want to talk about the S five. But Taylor, you talked specifically about this kind of brand initiative, this this, this sales tactic. I mean, yeah. it, talk more about it. I like your, I like your piece. Like, would would you wait in line to buy a phone? Basically, well, I would I would buy this thing, and I would rock it just to see what it was about because I have that general curiosity about up and comers, and I, I share that with you, Michael. Sure. Um, I'm not as much. Uh, of a the type to to root for an underdog, but in this case, I guess I can because they are making a statement, and and I like it. I can agree with that. But then they're like trying to manufacture even more hype by limiting the number of people who can actually buy this thing. I don't think that's why they're doing it. I think they're legitimately constrained by how many they can make. Um, I read somewhere, and I can't remember where, I think it was the comments of that article, actually, um, that they were only making like 20,000. Jeez. Uh, wow, that is a really small batch. But I don't think I, – uh, you, you think that they're doing that on purpose? They're limiting this to artificially inflate demand? I don't think so. I think they can't make them. No, fashion. but they're, they're – what I, what I see it as is they can only make 20,000 of these, so they're going to try to just, I guess – Increase that demand even more um, to make it uh, to inflate that elitist group of people who can get their hands on one. Mm. So twenty thousand people after they sell their twenty thousand, everybody else wants one. And if they, of course, they've already maybe, got the PR copy written for like you know we sold out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, and this is a crazy theory. I don't know. Um, they sell these twenty thousand in just days through this invitation process and they use that to seek funding to build more mm. and then they've got the the demand because there's so many people waiting for them i don't know it's a crazy theory but I, they're trying to make more of a situation like more out of nothing the way i see it um i mean it's there is hype for this phone because it's a spec heavy phone but they're just building it up more than it would have been originally had this invitation process never been even mentioned. Yeah, and you know, I just I I I agree that they're doing that. I don't think it's something to that I object to. I think it's a an, an innovative way to to build buzz. Might it be tactically unwise given their you know possible limitations? Yeah, maybe. But I just I, I see a lot of innovation in the way they're selling this thing. I, I don't like all of it, uh but certainly it's it's we talk all the time when it's like the middle of winter and we're all bored and depressed and sad. We talk all the time about like oh, I wish something new would show up. Like I'm so tired of the same old brands just fighting with each other. This is something new. They're doing is it? something. Yeah, you know it is because it's, it's not. It's it's like an oppo with a fresh coat of paint, really. 
Yeah, yeah it, it, it it's looks the same like company. the Seven A. Right, but it's not Oppo, right? It's the people who left Oppo. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure, but they left Oppo to start something else. So, like, I would be but equally as, not... as excited about the people who left Nokia to start something. Oh, look, they did. And then we have Yola. And, of course, that's another ball of wax That was entirely. a success, yeah. yeah but I, but, I, but he, that's my point. I don't think things necessarily need to be a smash-bang success out of the gate for them to be important. You know, I think this is this is this particular story weaves into the larger narrative about Nexus 5s and Moto Gs and Lumia 520s, these low-end phones that are not necessarily specced or performance rated to be low-end. What a crappy sentence that was, but you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> Words are hard, man. Very difficult. What is up? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just... It, I'm, to just me, saying, it doesn't I'm just saying seem... we shouldn't crap all over it because I I'm don't... not crapping all over it. Yeah, I, I, I said am. I would buy one. <laughs> I, I would have been nihilist strikes thing. again. <laughs> I would. No, no, no. I it's... would have been interested had I not had to be invited to buy one. I don't care. That does not speak to me. I just want to buy something. And if I if it's a click race to the first twenty thousand, fine. That increases my odds of getting one. And. I might have still bought one. Now, I don't even care. But if it was a traditional pre-order like that, I guarantee you we would have moved on already on this podcast. The the audience would have moved on already. They would have gotten a tenth the attention they got with this with this thing. Yes, it's it's exclusive. Yes, it's it's annoying and now you feel left out and you're burned about it, but like I'm not that's burned. the idea. You're a little burned. You're a little butt hurt. I'm not burned. You're a little bit. I'm butthurt. happy with my M8. <laughs> that's right. I'm happy with my M8 and I, I your it, mate from a, my mate, um, from from <laughs> from a marketing standpoint, it's a I'm smart blast move. My mate. <laughs> <laughs> from a marketing oh. standpoint, what they're doing is is clever. And yes, I can, I understand why they're doing it, but okay. that doesn't mean that I want to partake in it. Sure, no, and you don't have to. I just think, but that I'm not they're, burned. They're accomplishing, and I don't care. Accomplishing what they're what they're setting off to do. Stefan, what were you trying to say before we move on from this? Um, that whole smash my phone thing is disgusting. Yes. So I see, there, I don't see, I, I think it's, I think it's innovative. I think it's fun. It's yeah, sure. It's innovative. If you have a phone that you don't want, please smash it into the ground. And I hope that the glass hits, hits you in the face and you go huh. blind in one eye and that the battery explodes and you inhale all the toxic fumes. So is your, is your objection <laughs> that like, it's a, it's a waste that those phones should be put to better use when you absolutely don't want them? Like yeah. well, I can't can, argue with that. Can you give the phone to someone in your family or your community or whatever? Like smashing a phone just to say, "Oh, I really want this One Plus." I mean, it's just it's just insane. Well, that's a good call, and and also it's certainly the polar opposite of what the people at Phone Blocks are trying to do. What Project Ara is all about, um, because in addition to just being awesome, futuristic, cool, that stuff is kind of about, hey, we have a giant waste problem on the planet, and a big part of that waste problem is disposed of technology, which leaches horrible heavy metals into the environment and, and does all this stuff. So, And yeah. it gives Chinese children cancer, so please continue <gasps> to throw your phones down the toilet. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. So I, I, um, I get that. That's, that's a legitimate objection. I think it was Russell Holly who tweeted yesterday. He said, instead of smashing your phone, here's a link so you can donate them to soldiers overseas. There you go. Yes, yes. That's the – Yeah. This so is if, a, a, a good objection. Yeah. If, if OnePlus had said, send us your phone and we're going to do something useful with it uh, and then we'll sell you this for a dollar – and sadly, you know, that, yeah. and that that's a bit of a missed opportunity in terms of uh, of a chance to do something good. But I gotta say, if, and you guys know this, I, I don't have to tell you, they wouldn't have gotten nearly the amount of of hype from it. No, they wouldn't. Yeah, marketing is a dirty business. It is. Take take a video of you boxing up your phone to send to us, so we can do something nice with it. <laughs> I'm sure the video will get more than 240 views. Hey, I've got views. a soundtrack that they can use for it. The one that uh, made every, everyone want to oh commit suicide. Uh, <laughs> so the one plus one, uh, people, have, by the way, commenters, I want to answer your questions. Uh, yes, we would like to get a, one of these units. But as Stefan said, it's not uh, necessarily a, an easy business. Um, some people have gotten hands on it. We obviously haven't. So we'll get one if we can. Um, we're certainly interested in it. So, if you know somebody at one plus one at uh, at uh, one, 
plus. So wait, the company's named One. One plus. No, the company is no. One Plus. And the device is One. Oh, God, what a pain that brand name. Times is. two divided by ten. Yeah. Ugh. So anyway, if you have one, send it to us. Thanks. We won't smash it. Is Google planning a massive voice explosion? <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Google planning massive voice control explosion with OK Google everywhere? Question mark. Voice explosion. Voice explosion. Stephen Chang's going to be on the show in 12 minutes, but uh, unfortunately, we can't wait for him to explain that awesome headline. Can we, can we, can we please greet him with voice explosion? <laughs> hey, voice explosion, Spring Door. What's happening? Yeah, I think that uh, this is very cool. This, was, this is a news story from just today. So this Android police is reporting that it's seen evidence suggesting Google wants to make its OK Google voice prompts. Uh, or, no, OK Google voice prompts a pervasive part of the android experience and rather than being constrained to the home screen you'll be able to say it everywhere within individual apps it sounds awesome but that in and of itself is just the tip of the iceberg google may also be looking to change up the navigation buttons we're currently familiar with says the same story with the biggest shift being getting rid of the home button replacing it with a google button to go back home you'd have to hit the recent apps button and perform a swipe gesture Details are like clear, that. blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the way St- – uh, Steve Taylor, I knew you were going to say that. And I think everyone would say the <laughs> same thing because the way Stephen explains it, uh, it doesn't sound very sexy or useful or whatever. But I'll tell you what. You know what this sounds like, Taylor? Tell me. Um, I, I don't know where you're going with that. I'm I don't sure you do. Where am I <laughs> always going with anything? Yeah. Stefan, why don't you in, 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 tell us? WebOS. Thank you. This sounds an awful lot like WebOS. It sounds an awful lot like something Matthias Duarte would try to do with Android, where because you don't really need a home button if you move to a UI that puts the task switcher at the center of the experience. You can just swipe to get back to it, and then you have freed up room for a home key, and then you can put a Google search button there, which is, which is pretty smart if you're a search company. So, Well, yeah, that would make sense, but... Um, and now, if 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 they swap the functionality that they currently have, which is swipe up from the bottom of the the display to get to Google Now and tap to go home, if they just swap those, so swipe yes. up to go home, yes. tap to go to Google, that would make yes. sense. Yes, I would be. Oh my God, I would take a day <laughs> off work and throw a party. I I, I don't know why, but I, I, I I'm <laughs> just I would be so excited about that. Ah, because. Returning to the home screen through an upswipe is is sublime. It is a user experience that makes so much sense. It's infuriating more people don't do it. BlackBerry 10 does it. That's the only OS that does it right now, and it's freaking brilliant. I love it. Stefan, what do you think? Well, uh, I'm going to take that highest attitude and just say... I can't really comment on this because I don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> well, let's and talk. He's well, still caught up on food. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, well, no I can't compare this to pasta, so I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Here's how it's going to work. So Android Police published a rumor. Everyone's going to comment on the rumor. Google will officially announce all of this stuff at I.O. Everyone's going to comment on the stuff that was announced at I.O. <laughs> this brand new version of Android will eventually ship. Everyone's going to comment on the Android version that shipped. And then three months later, people are going to say, oh, well, how have we gotten along with this new version of Android? And <laughs> like, I'm not going to speculate now about how I feel about a version of Android that I don't know whether it will or will not come out in the next 60 you days. Are, you are a, uh, oh, a news elitist. I love it. I love it. Uh, I make no shame in hiding that no, fact. Actually, actually, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not, not an insult. Not an insult at all. And we also live on a spec on top of another spec on a spec <laughs> inside a spec inside of another spec <laughs> that just creates an atom for some other universe. Well, it's all part of a marble <laughs> in an aliens game of Baccarat. So that's the important thing. I part will of all say this. this though. It's very, very interesting to me that Google wants their Google brands to be on the front of every single Android phone. What do you mean? Is it, is it part of this story or something else? Because I've Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So well, if, the they change the, um, if they change the on-screen keys so that regardless of the application you're in, it says Google on your phone constantly in your face, uh, from, a, from a PR standpoint, that's a huge uh, coup. Oh, it sure is. And it, and it also follows right in line with what the company is doing by demanding its OEMs to put the Android logo on boot screens. I mean, it, you know, it, it wants that mind share back that it sort of lost by giving Android to the world and saying, do whatever you want with it. Now, yeah. everyone needs to be reminded, hey, 
this is Android. Oh, right, that's from Google. Oh, yes, they run the world. I <laughs> forgot. Huh. Uh, we kind of missed entirely the point of the first point of the story, which is the voice, uh, persistent voice search everywhere. I have nothing to say on this except, A, I think it's very likely that this is going to happen. B, it makes all the sense in the world because the more I use touchless control in the Moto X, as everyone knows, the more I wonder why the hell it's not on every phone because it's the most useful thing ever. Yep. I miss it. Yeah. It's freaking great. Now, is this just within the phone or does it um, respond only to you? Like, does it work from standby like touchless touchless control? Well, we have some screenshots here. So this is, thankfully this is not – well, we, you know, they, I, I'm not saying these are confirmed screenshots, but they, they certainly are look renders. pretty good. Are they renders? Yes. Ah, oh, son of a – see, this is the problem. <laughs> I didn't actually get to read this one before it went on because this is a – late-breaking piece. These are speculative renders, is that correct? Uh, from Who whipped yes. these up? Was this Android Police or somebody else? Uh, Android Police heard about the rumor, and they probably hired some guy to catch up some stuff. So. Yeah, they don't have APKs, rumor confidence level. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We will hear about this on June 25th at Google I.O. Yeah, we will. Are you going? Yeah. Of course not. Why, why would I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a room full of guys who love phones. It's like, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> He's going to be too busy creating headlines and then sipping scotch the rest of the day. That's right. Too busy dumping tech. So jealous. <laughs> Father of Google Plus is leaving the company, a story that I was momentarily excited about. Um, what? No, no, not because of Vic... Uh, Whose last name I have always Gundotra. 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 I always want to say Gundotra. Gundotra. Uh, no, no, no. Not because he's a nice, nice guy, awesome guy. It makes a lot of sense. Brilliant. All this kind of stuff. No, no, no. Just because I thought that maybe this would introduce some form of disruption to Google Plus, a stranglehold on everything that is good about the rest of the Google ecosystem. I like Google Plus. Google Plus is the listen. Ugh. So I put this in the rundown so that we could talk about it um, briefly, the, this concept of Google+, Plus, because obviously we, we wish the best for Vic, but, and, and it looks like the successor is VP of Engineering Dave... Uh, I can't even Bez, pronounce it. Bezbris. 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 Um, his, his hobbies include taking photographs of flowers. Is that true? And, yes. <laughs> Huh. Well, he I mean, published I, I like the whole to... Google Plus thing. He worked at America Online for, for, flowers for, for for ten years. So the point is that uh, I don't know anything about about him, but it looks like there's going to be a, quite a bit of continuity here. It doesn't look like this is a big shakeup or anything like that. So at least to me, uh, somebody interrupt me if you disagree. But it looks like Google Plus will continue on the road that it's been going on. And this is what I have an objection to. I'm not interested in talking to you guys about whether it sucks or not as a social network. Okay, it has its ups and downs. That's My, what we talked about last night on Untethered. So, oh, I'm, I'm going to listen to that because uh, <laughs> I do have an obje objection too. But I will let you finish. Okay, yeah. My objection with Google Plus is that no matter how good something is, it is inherently worse if it is forced on you to use a company's other products. And I have a really good example of this. We have a uh, we used to publish the Pocket Now Weekly on YouTube, which we still do, even though it's an audio-only show. But if you wanted the time codes to the categories, we would make you go to the post at pocketnow.com. The reason for that was that we wanted more people to go to the shell post at Pocket Now. Yes, for ads, but also just we wanted more people to see pocketnow.com. The thing is, that's a really crappy experience. You don't want to jump to another website in another tab so you can use time codes. So you can f f like jump back and forth. It's a crappy experience. And so we stopped doing that. We stopped shoving that crap down your throat. We're like, no, hey, you know, we'll put the time codes in the description. We'll make it easier, make it a better experience. What Google does with Google Plus is like, hey, we built this social network. It's not that compelling, but it's not that offensive. It's just kind of like, it's cool. It's got some cool features, whatever. But you have to use it if you want to use most of the cool stuff about Google. Like YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially YouTube. <laughs> and that's... You know, that's offensive. That's irritating. And you're setting yourself up for to, to be resented. And what the hell kind of model is that? That sucks. I hate, so this is why I hate Google+. Plus. Not because it's a bad network, but because I've been f forced to use it. And that's I haven't crap. been forced to use it. I've been forced to create a profile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not forced to use it. Just forced to have it. 
So you're not prompted like I am about every 10 days to do something else on Google Plus. Hey, do, do, make sure you plug this into Google Plus so that you have these other. Nope. Oh, so well, I should take your life then because it sounds a lot I, easier than mine. But I also like Google Plus. So I'm less prone to complain about something like that if it were to happen. I like Google+. Plus. The interaction there is insanely high. I can post a picture of anything. doesn't matter what it is. And I get lots of likes. I get lots of comments. And there is a discussion. I can post a picture on Twitter. Again, it's and a I get network. people. It's, it's, I get, it's a cool social network. Yeah. It's but I, I post something to Twitter. I post the same picture to Twitter. And I get like 30 tweets from people who are like, have you tried turning it off? Yes. Like, <laughs> reboot the yes, rest. clearly. <laughs> like, it's just I get a different level of interaction and a different type of interaction there, so I like it. Well, that's fine. You like the network. Circling back. My, my point is that it, it's that it's being forced on me, so I don't like it inherently. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, Skynet. so s- <laughs> circling back <laughs> to what you said about separating Google Plus, the social network, versus Google Plus, the platform, according to, quote-unquote, sources familiar with the matter, uh, who spoke to TechCrunch, um, the core features that are awesome about Google Plus, so Google Photos and Google Hangouts, those teams working on those projects, this is just a rumor, they have left to become their own independent teams, but they will integrate into the Google Plus platform. So as opposed to shoving all of these features into a social network that you're forced to use, it's like, okay, if you just want to use Hangouts, then just use Hangouts. If you just want to use um, Google Photos, have fun. And then all of this sort of stuff will tie into your Google Plus account um, as in your identifier. So as opposed to entering your username and password, you say, oh yeah, I have a Google account. Boom. Then you're done. That's just a rumor. Yeah, and, and no, that's a degree of convenience that it, that is certainly worthwhile, and that's being, you know, bandied about in the comments as well. It's just, I am with you one hundred percent. Though I hate stuff being shoved down my throat, and every time I go to Gmail dot com, I feel like crying. It's like, oh, look at look, you have your email, and you have your we have the bell with the Google Plus notifications, and look, there's a folder called pluses and circles. Please use them for the love of God. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just bad. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. You know, it's, it's funny because Taylor, Taylor's counter argument is totally valid. I'm not, it, I'm not being forced at every turn to use it or be thrown off Google. It's more that it, the, the, this forcing is more in the vein of like, hey – Hey, have you heard of our new service? Hey, hey, let me poke you a little bit. Hey, re- hey, why don't you Google Plus this? Hey, a lot of people have Plus One with this. Why don't you do that? Like, it's that kind of thing, and which makes it even more annoying somehow because I, <laughs> maybe it's just my weird personality, but I'd rather have a dominant like force come into come in and be like, hey, everyone's on this, and you should be on it. You know it, so just get on here. I respond better to that than like, hey, we're trying this thing. It's like it's this network. Hey, it's we're going to tell you about it all the time. It's not really. I'm a startup. Not, not a lot of people like it, but you know you like it, right? Come use it. You'll like it. I, I hate that. <laughs> hate that. Taylor says something is relevant. What's relevant? Um, <clears throat> Stephen just wrote about that, so you might want to include it in the rundown. Maybe we should be worried about the fate of Google Plus after all, says Stephen's headline. Well, I haven't read this story. <laughs> also, there's a tornado warning for Charlotte right now. And it kind of looks like a tornado outside. So, Ooh, all right, whatever. blasted in the face with wind. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, anybody hears a train noise, um, yeah, really, you make sure you have a clear path to your basement, bruh. Uh, I'm on the fourth floor. All right, whatever. Well, and we'll see you later. <laughs> I'll see you in the next life. <laughs> see you in another life, brother. Or Let's on, get on another Shank spec. On this call in another now. spec inside another spec. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. Uh, I'm just hopping on here. Are we? Are we pausing for a minute? Because I'd no, like to not. get some. Okay. No, okay. I'll be back. No, not at all. We don't have time. <laughs> You'll be back. Let's welcome Stephen Shank to the airwaves. Even though it's not time for listener mail yet, I want to bring him on board because I told him four o'clock, and now it's four o'clock. Won't that be fun? Add people. Add people to the call. Do you know what's really there? You go, Stephen. Hey. Hey. Welcome Voice aboard, explosion. brother. Voice explosion. Welcome. <laughs> hey, pu- 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 <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, have you ever been on the show with Stefan before? I have not. Stephen, Stefan, Stefan, Stephen. 
Hello. This is kind of, I'm really glad that you guys don't pronounce your name the same way because that would be a very confusing thing. See, while we wait for Taylor to get back from his water run, would you tell us why maybe we should be worried about the fate of Google Plus after all? We're wrapping up the Android category with that. Well, I'm not because, I mean, Google Plus. But if you like Google Plus, <laughs> if Google Plus is your bag, as it were, yeah. Um, so, you know, we heard this uh, Vic Gundatra leaving Google stuff yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I just assumed that, you know, seeing how much effort Google has put into Google Plus over the past couple of years, especially this past year where, you know, every, uh, you know, Android app under the sun wants you to be doing something with Google Plus, I just assumed that it was going to continue very much along the same track. And they were, you know, promoting some dude from within to keep running it. It seemed like it would be business as usual. But TechCrunch has heard from at least two, possibly more, it's hard to tell by how they word it, um, sources within Google saying that, no, actually, this conductor stuff may just be the beginning of the end for Google+, Plus. That, or at least as we know it. And it could start you know, changing shape, being less about the social stuff and more about just a you know continual... Yeah, well, a way to host other stuff, just like a Google account, basically. Stefan, is this is this exactly what you were referring to right before Taylor sent the link? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this these are the okay. So we actually have we covered this immediately before Taylor saw the story that you wrote, Stephen. So we were what all the hell on the am same I here page. For? We didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just informed the group uh, listeners that we are going to bypass the iOS section, but just for to let you know. Uh, there's been a wonderful interview about, of the New York Times uh, who sat down with the developer of the um, of Safari, basically, which is a really, really cool conversation. Um, and the guy looks like a fun time, too, based on that. Uh, the Francisco Tomalski. Tol 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 Tomaski. I can't pronounce any names today. And it's going to get worse in listener mail. But you should check out that story, and you should also... Um, Tim Cook granted another interview where he said, hey, uh, Apple takes a long time to do stuff, and we're not sorry. By the way, have you heard we're doing another product category? Also, mobile payments sucks. Don't you think we should change that up? Yep. Have a nice day. That's what happened in iOS this week. Am I missing anything? I think the key part of that Tim Cook interview was he said, I have a wallet. You have a wallet. We have wallets. They work just fine. <laughs> That's true. Hey, have, is anybody on the air with me right now uh, pre-ordered coin? Speaking of that? I have. Oh, yeah, didn't Taylor? Coin. Yeah, to, is, coin, Stefan, is the um, – well, Taylor, why don't you explain it? Because I pre-ordered it, but I can't really explain what it is. It's a digital debit card that you connect, you connect all of your debit cards to. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty stupid. much it. I don't know why. No, it sounds great. Why no, is it stupid? It does not work with chip and pin, so I don't really it care. It doesn't, yeah. In Europe, you're out a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forget that. We, we still swiping over here. Yeah. It's going to change in October 2015, I believe. Damn it. Guys. I'm yeah. canceling my pre order. No, I'm not. Mine was free. <laughs> Wait, really? No, he means yeah. bringing chip and pin to the U.S., right? Yes, yes, that's happening yeah. here. But mine was free because I pre-ordered and sent out my link, and a whole bunch of people signed up under me. Oh, oh nice! Wow, well, I didn't do angle. that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I use my followers. We have Steve. Yeah. <laughs> way to <laughs> way to monetize your base, bro. Your freaking soul is en route to the devil. Hey, uh, Stephen is on the air with us now. The MacBook Air fan has spun up in excitement, and so I think it's time for listener mail. Bong bong. Hello. Yeah. Listener the, mail. The listener way I've mail. broken this. I'm glad, Stefan, you're joining us for this. Now, are you sure you don't want to retire to your scotch and your, your aqua jet? I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. Should, should I go uh, write my review? <laughs> uh, why? Do you want to get out of here? It doesn't matter. Well, it's your birthday tomorrow. It is. I mean, you could Ooh. get started early if you left now. I mean, if you wanted to. <laughs> get started early by starting a review. Yeah. <laughs> Age <that's>, faster, Taylor. <laughs> that's, that's how I like to uh, celebrate my thing. I'll tell you what. You just leave when you want to leave. Yeah. You stick around if you want to. Right, <laughs> drunk. Edit sober. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Who was that? Hemingway? No. Yes. It was Hemingway? Yeah. That's a great quote. Right, drunk, edit sober. I like it. Uh, we have six pieces of listener mail. Uh, when we had, if we had three people, it would be two people per mail. But we're just gonna kind of go. The only thing I'm gonna say is I'm gonna read the last one because it's from a friend of mine. So why don't I kick us off? I think this is fun. I'm gonna do the first one then. 
Because it's Moto G. <laughs> okay. I guess elbow my way in. This here. is really, this is hilarious. Like, so why don't I do the first one? Taylor's like, so why don't I do the first one? Okay. <laughs> right, right Go for it. You have a good time pronouncing this uh, this person's name. Oh, whoa! I did not read that far ahead. <laughs> oh. Wow! Um, <laughs> By the way, this is a, this is this is a uh, if you're a new listener, we're not just being uh, offensive. Um, none of us can pronounce any any names ever. So, <laughs> but we can pronounce them. They're just not correct. Yeah, yes. exactly right. So, Kaushchuba Putal. Uh, nope. Put- nope yeah, no, 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 no. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaushchuba Putal. Putalingaya. Putalingaya. Yeah. Putalingaya. Yeah. Rolls off the tongue. I think I think that one works well. Totally rose off the tongue. This is a um, good question, though. Go for it. For future reference, I'm going to call you KP. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Hi, I love the podcast. You guys did an excellent job. Thank you. I recently got myself a G and I love it. But I come from the iOS device background. I owned an iPod Touch. With Apple, it's always easy to back up and restore the device with help of iTunes. Now, recently, I had to reset my phone, and the biggest problem I faced was how to back up the apps. In iTunes, the apps were always on my laptop, and I wouldn't have to re-download them if I were to reset. I live in India where the data speeds are low and the cost is high, so cloud backup isn't ideal for me. Is there any way I can keep my apps on my laptop and be able to install them when I want, uh, when I want to rather than downloading them each time I want to install the app? I hope my concerns are well addressed here and uh, looking forward to the next podcast. Keep up the good works. Uh, good works. Keep up the good work. Thanks, KP. So for Android, it's kind of tricky. Um, there's an uh, it's sort of an easy way to do it, but not really. Um, the easiest way, and it's kind of odd to call it easy, is to root and use Titanium Backup. Yeah. I have had so many problems with Titanium Backup, it's not even funny. It's actually rarely ever worked for me. Um, the other option is an app called Helium, which is from... Is it from Kushik? I think it is. Did I don't know? know. No? I thought I that know. was from... From Kush. Either way, um, that one works in the way that it backs up your information, but you're still going to have to download the apps. So what I've actually ended up doing when I need to back up all of my stuff is I use ADB, and that's that is actually one area where iOS is much more user friendly in back is is backing up everything. Um, but I use ADB. I plug the phone in, put it in USB debugging, and I just do ADB backup. And then you can use some identifiers. Um, you set it to all apps, and you back it up. And if you ever need to restore anything, you just ADB restore. It may um, not be very user friendly, but dang, if it ain't powerful. Right. It, it's not user friendly at all, but it will back up everything, and it's great. So it, it's kind of a a lose lose maybe i don't know i mean it's possible it's just there's no good user-friendly way to do it also i think there's a distinction that i'm not sure is worth mentioning here but we're talking about backing up apps in my mind that just means you know the apks in which case it's easy you can load those onto your laptop sideload them as you need if you want to free up space on the phone app data on the other hand is a different story and yeah. that you'd want to use one of these, you know, either ADB or titanium or something. Because you, you will lose that if you're just reloading the APKs. If we had a sponsor, I would say, uh, here's where I would do it, like a two-minute bit about Carbonite. But Back up your life. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are some apps in Google Play that allow you to just go through and back up all the apps you want. And I think the app's called App Backup. Um, it's pretty simple, and it does just what Stephen was talking about. It just saves the APK, and you can move that over to your computer and install those apps as you need. But the problem is that there are a lot of applications that are protected. So if you buy applications, the developer will often protect those apps, and you can't actually physically save the APK without being Uh. rooted. So it's kind of a hit or miss um, I would suggest downloading one of those apps if if what you're doing is trying to trying to avoid just having to download the apps again. Um, but then there's another problem. So if you back up your apps and say two months later you have to wipe your phone, you install those apps again, you're still going to have to updo- update those apps to the newer versions, and you're still going to end up downloading about the same amount of data. So <laughs> it's kind of lose-lose, I guess. 
Hmm. I think uh, we've got uh, a fair amount of possibilities, though. It sounded like you guys were able to deliver some helpful advice. Yeah. Uh, KP, thank you for the uh, email, and we apologize for the shortening of your name. Soon we will all take linguistics classes, and we will know how to pronounce things properly. I ain't going back to school. You go back to school. <laughs> you go back. <laughs> hey, Stephen, why don't you read the uh, the next piece of mail there? For sure. Chris Rogers from Ridgeland, MS. What state is MS? Missouri? Mississippi. 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 <laughs> we don't want to mess those up on election night, as the newsroom no, showed do us. Do not. Mm-mm. Uh Chris Rogers writes, hey, Pocket Now team, I love listening to your podcast every week. It gives me something to do while I work. (laughs) Don't tell your boss that. You're welcome. I'm just curious about your thoughts on what software project Aura will be running. Will the prospect of modular phone, with the prospect of modular phones, what happens to the software? Uh, Will they all be running stock Android, or will the endoskeletons from different manufacturers come pre-configured with things like TouchWith, Sense, or whatever respective skin comes from that OEM? Uh, Michael, you did a great job hosting the podcast. Keep up the good work. Tell Taylor that I like his podcast, Untethered, as well, and that it's okay to be Southern. Hear that, Taylor? Yeah. (laughs) Keep keep it up. (laughs) I'm a South Korean that was raised in Mississippi. See there, I just read ahead. So I'm more redneck than Asian. And P.S. Ask Joe to make an appearance as soon as he can. Sorry for all the demands. Do not worry about the demands. We we appreciate (laughs) demands that are, you know, telling us how awesome we are. We do. Um, But, yeah, as for this Aura thing, that's an interesting question. Um, So far, we've been talking about that in the past. Yeah, Yeah. and fun fact, we we were supposed to talk about Project Aura last week when Brad Mullen was on the show, and um, I erroneously let in the show indicating that we would talk about the Galaxy S5, something else, and Android Wear. Uh, that's not true. We were supposed to talk about Project Aura. In fact, we talked about neither because we ran out of time. So uh, we don't know what the story is with software on this, right? I do. Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Oh, what's the story? Yes. Okay. So Google held some sort of uh, Project Aura, Project Aura d- developer conference live stream YouTube yeah, thing. Yeah, I watched some yeah, of yeah. that. Yeah. I, I watched the whole damn thing. And wow. basically... Oh, the phone will come out in Q1 2015. The exoskeleton will run a fork of Android simply because it needs to use highly customized drivers. Yeah. So it, it, it will be stock Android in the sense of the uh, user interface, but the actual, um, is it stock Android? If you, if you want to use the official definition, then no, it isn't. But then um, neither is the one on the Moto X, and we all love that. Exactly. Yeah. So the UI uh, stuff. Yeah, because they they have to use what looks like a hardware a um a hardware abstraction layer construction yes. is required for Ara to work according to XDA. Oh. Huh. Wow. So that's interesting. Okay. Well, that's that's good stuff. So, but we, Stefan, you you say that the, the probably it's safe to speculate at this point that it's going to be a, a close to a stock build. It will be extremely close to stock build. Google will control the entire experience. When you purchase an endoskeleton, I don't think it's exoskeleton. Yeah, it's endo, yeah. Um, <laughs> it will turn on to a generic user interface that will allow you to purchase modules for the Aura. Oh, so wait, the first thing you're going to get hit, hit with when you power on the thing is like, hey, buy more modules. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> If you buy the plain old $50 um, endoskeleton, which has absolutely nothing installed in it except for the screen, obviously, um, the first time you you turn it on, it's going to say, hey, bro, I'm kind of useless. Uh, you should hook me up. <laughs> well, it'll have Wi-Fi, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's going to be so much fun to do. Did, did, they, give a, did they give a, a rough price estimate for the different modules? Some guy asked that. He said, "All right, well, uh, a top of the line Samsung is like six hundred bucks. Uh, what's a top of the line Arrow gonna cost?" And the exact quote was, "Well, because it's modular, it's a bit more complicated. So it's it's not gonna be six hundred. It'll be like six fifteen. But we have to emphasize that the et- <laughs> that the endoskeleton is fifty bucks. And you have to remember, Project Aura is not for the people who want to buy a, an iPhone six or a Samsung Galaxy S fourteen. Right. It's for people who live in emerging markets." who buy a phone and they keep it for seven, ten years and they swap out the components as required. Can you imagine what that what an endo is going to look like after a projected life cycle on one of these things? Like, 
it's going to look be, like dirt. Yeah, it's going to be like burnished be awesome. metal. Yeah. Like, it, it's going to have all this character to it, like an old, like if it were wood, it would be like an old coffee table. But what's, I don't know, like an old car. It would look like a prop from a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Like a laser what? burns on it. And <laughs> <laughs> laser burns. Micro meteoroid craters. Yeah. Ah. Pew, pew. This is going to be really cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. You, somebody should do that. We should... I don't know. We should find some useful, productive way of saying, like, how long can you hold on to an endoskeleton and just do it for a decade? <laughs> and have a guest post. It's like, I left the Long mobile tech piece. field seven years ago. <laughs> Take a picture of it every day and have this false awesome yes. <laughs> <laughs> When my endo started growing facial hair, I let it go. Oh, God. There are old grandmas who ride the subway here in Helsinki who still use a Nokia 1100. So oh, it works just man. fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, this next one uh, I would like Taylor to read, and I like it because it's not really a question. It's just a, uh, a two, two statements that I like a lot. Awesome. Um, I just have to thank Chris Rogers, though, for, for, for plugging Untethered for me. Thanks. Glad you like, like it. I'm yeah, Chris, Taylor, Taylor doesn't ever do it on this show, so it's good that you're Never. here to remind him that he has a podcast Never. called Untethered that you can also download places on Wait. the Internet. I have a I have a podcast. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> firstly, I continue to love the show, and it remains the highlight of my podcatching week. It is refreshing how enthusiastic the team is about tech, rather than just being cynical about everything that is proposed or released, like some other podcasts I won't mention. Shots Mine. fired. <laughs> <laughs> As we have the nihilist on here, right? the nihilist, not just a nihilist, the uh... nihilist. <laughs> to my point, all video reviews of devices seem to contain at least one shot where the device is placed face up or down on an abrasive surface that is likely to scratch it. Is You're this welcome. a deliberate effort to make people feel uncomfortable? If so, mission accomplished. A <laughs> <laughs> little. I, I love that's, this. <laughs> that's got to be Michael. That's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the thing that I objected to when I came on board, um, not not with Pocket Now, but just with kind of the landscape in general, was that not a lot of people were doing review videos in settings other than an, an office indoors in good lighting. And I kind of wanted to in, inject some variety into the scene. So I, A little I, less sterile, right? Yeah. So I, I tend to find environments that tend to be industrial rough, you know, rust streaked and 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 kind of laser burnt. Broken. Yeah, right. Yeah, pew pew. And uh pew, as, pew. as a result, uh <laughs> yeah, the phone often has to go down on it like a sorry. The phone is often put down on a uh like a concrete block or something like that. Some really abrasive surface. Uh oh and you will be perhaps disappointed, perhaps heartened to know that no, it's usually going down not directly on that horrible, rough texture, but on a business card or a piece of tissue paper or something that's protected. Hollywood lies. Yeah. There's a My life lies. is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to shatter your illusions. We do protect our review devices, although I have really... Really bad luck with review devices. I, I do break them. You have more, bad luck. More I get the ones that don't work out of the box. Well, that's not that. Is, I guess that is bad luck. I mean, I, just I'm just true. an incompetent at holding things because I break review devices and a drown, little more often than I like. Drown them occasionally. Yeah, drown them. Lost one. Anyway, um, yeah. So, Owen, thank you for noticing. And uh, so, no, we're not beating up our phones. At least not on video. I feel like this could be part of like a new trend, though, as Michael puts phones in precarious situations. Just like you walk up, <laughs> leave a phone, like just hanging over the edge of a desk and walk away. And there's like a curious dog nearby yes. jumping around. And you don't know what's going to happen. You know that phone crazy? could be doomed. I just yeah, it's funny. I should have filmed my uh, making a video for yesterday's comparison, because when I was doing the long exposure shots with the icon and the uh, Galaxy S5, I had them leaning over the edge of a table. And yeah, yeah, yeah. what do you know? It's a pitch black room and I misjudged it. And I'm the phone does a somersault and bam. Oh, on the heart pounder. Oh, it was rough. Especially considering earlier in the day I had broken a Note 3 by doing exactly <laughs> that. <laughs> Jesus, man. I know. I know. I know. <sighs> this is, I need a vacation. Hey, guys, uh, says Anton SM. Love the podcast. Uh, oh, and thank you again. Always so fun to listen to. Thank you, Anton. I myself listen to it on my Zune 80. True Whoa. fact. <laughs> my God, that's awesome. 
Tall as old really as Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if we can get the podcast on a, like an eight track or a reel to reel, just so we can listen to it in different format. Micro cassette. Yeah. Oh, mini disc. A spinning cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> a wax, a wax pressing of the Pocket Now Weekly. <laughs> My question to you is: Currently, a buzzword that I've heard a lot of is the term post PC. As we progress to a world where everything is super portable and Microsoft's trying to push full-blown Windows 8 on all form factors. Do you see our world moving away from the traditional desktop to perform our everyday tasks? Our world is everything app-based with an app for everything, or internet browser for lack of apps. But I still believe that nothing can beat the desktop. For some, it does depend on occupation, whether or not a desktop is needed. But overall, I believe that they are still needed. What is your view Keep up the great work, Anton SM. This is a great question, and we have addressed this in an editorial somewhat recently. From me. Was it you? Is it the, is it the one that I pitched about, like, if if we're in a post-PC world, why, does my, why do I still prefer my desktop for everything? Um, no. That was the one was the from one Steven. the one where right? I spent a day working from a tablet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. not what I'm talking about. I'm, I ain't talking about your, your circus trick nonsense. Chip a <laughs> That was your idea, too. No, it wasn't. Tony I, said it was. I wouldn't have pitched a generic idea like that. I'm no. sure you would. No, I wouldn't. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the point is, yeah, I think we've, we've been covering this uh, through various avenues, and it's a good question, and I'll just go with my answer real quick. You, you, yeah, no. I, Anton, I'm with you, man. If I am out... On on the go, yes, there are times that I, obviously, I use my smartphone all the time. Obviously, I use tablets all the time. And sometimes the Lumia 2520, kind of a convergence device with the power keyboard, can get me through a day. But the, I, I am most efficient and I am most, I'm at my best on a desktop or an actual true, you know, notebook machine. Still, despite yeah. the fact that it's like old school. Steven, are you in the same boat? Phones are getting a lot better at doing certain sort of things, you know, consumption of media, communication, but there's certain tasks that you're just always going to need a PC for. Like, I've been really into fooling around with software-defined radio lately. You can't hook that hardware up to a smartphone, and even if you could, it'd be a pain in the ass to use. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need the flexibility that of a larger, more, you know, cumbersome device affords you. True enough. And Taylor, I think you were, you found basically the same thing to be true after your day with the iPad, yeah? Yeah, and I mean, I do most of my work away from a computer, as as much of my work away from a computer that I possibly can, but inevitably I always have to come back to it. Like, I, I don't do video editing from an iPad, obviously. Um, so <laughs> Clearly, yeah. Yeah, so there are always, not always, there are things that are, for now, going to be better from a laptop or a desktop. Um, <laughs> you know what I just had to start doing the other week is burning CDs again. What? I'm never going to be able to do that with a, with a smartphone. <laughs> with I like my real fire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Magnifying lens and the spinning it really quick. I want my, my next smartphone to have a CD-ROM drive. That's going to be my requirement. Oh, gosh. Wow. You could probably do it through uh, USB on the go. <laughs> yeah, actually, totally, yeah. Yeah, Stefan, what's your story over there? What's your uh, your? Pref I, I have a feeling you're a desktop kind of guy. I have, a f I have a picture of you just kind of hunched over like a Packard Bell, you know, um, and a well worn keyboard. I haven't owned a desktop computer in years. Um, really? Yeah. So I use a MacBook Pro, and before this, I use IBM ThinkPad, and before that, I used uh, another IBM ThinkPad. Um, Why do I think you'd be like older school than that? I don't know. Because a long time ago, I used to work for a PC gaming company, and my job was to build computers and sell them for obscene prices. That um, must be why. There you go. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that as you get older and as technology advances, you don't use less technology. You just use different technology for different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kind of answered his own question. Yeah, there are some cases where the smartphone is like, okay, this task, let's say email, is perfect on the smartphone. But if I want to edit video, there's no way in hell I'm going to edit it on the smartphone. Of course I want to sit in front of a big, powerful computer. But that's not saying that the computer is useless and the smartphone is useless. It's just all of them have their respective uh, use cases. They're all tools, and you have to pick the right tool for the right job, and that's that. You know, we keep mentioning video. This is one of these things that I 
guaranteed five years from now, it'll be all over tablets, people editing, you know, HD, 4K video, because as we get more RAM, more storage, especially as communication speeds improve. So, you know, storing your uh, raw clips in the cloud becomes more tenable. I can see the, the video editing shifting from PCs because there's nothing really inherent to the PC about that makes a video editing such a, a well-suited task for it. It's just they have the horsepower for it. Well, I guess, but at the same time, you, you do need a lot of display real estate for that, Stephen. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to sacrifice a lot of my display acreage for controls, hey, which you have to do on a 12.2-inch tablet. tablets are starting to come uh, into their own now. Nowhere near Ooh. big enough for me. Uh, no, no, I can't do it. <laughs> right. I, I want to have one hand on a keyboard with a bunch of hotkeys, the other hand on a mouse or a pointer device, and that's that's how I, like... That's how I spend hours of my life. In that's Final quite Cut sad, Pro Michael. 10. Hey, you know, <laughs> you know? That's how you spend your Thursday that's the, nights that's at 4 price, in the morning. Uh, that's the price you pay for great art. That's all I'm saying. Stefan, why don't you read the uh, Jason... Oh, Anton SM, yes, no? Who, whose was that? Was that what Anton's question? Happened. That was yes. Anton, yeah. Okay, Anton, thank you for your question. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, why don't you go ahead and read uh, Jason's email here? Uh, email yeah. from uh, Jason, without a family name. Hi, Pocket Now team. So point. Jason the Orphan. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm a big fan of the podcast ever since episode one. I usually listen while walking my dog, and I enjoy the effort put into each one. Thanks, man. I myself am a junior in high school, meaning I have to select colleges of interest by next year. Yeah. I have been interested in smartphone software and design ever since I bought my first iPhone 4. So, here's my question. Does anyone on the Pocket Now team have any tips on what I should on what I should study slash do if I want to be involved in the mobile industry? What should I major in? What should I mi minor in? Which summer classes do I, do I take? Advice in general. To offerings, the offerings colleges present are never directed at the mobile market sele selectively. True. There's no intro to smartphone design. I hope you can all enlighten me on this topic. Thanks and love the show. Jason the Orphan. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. I feel really bad if Jason is no. Yeah. Um, if if this if you're interested in software, the software side of it, computer science or um, uh, software engineering, hands down, that's what you need to do. As far as the other, you would probably need to look into um, mechanical engineering or uh, just design in general. Yeah, just electrical broad, engineering, industrial electrical, design. There's so many. Any of those will put you in this. the mobile industry. It is a blooming market, and um, yeah, computer science is, is where I was. That's what I was going to school for before I said, I don't want to do this. Noise. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I like it. I, I actually really enjoy code and learning different languages, and I was actually pretty good at it, but I just got preoccupied with a lot of other things. Mm. Um, but definitely computer science, if you want to do software, and electrical engineering is going to get you into the actual inner workings, but the design, you need to take some art stuff for that. For sure. Yeah, and for don't be sure. afraid to push yourself. I just saw some interview with whoever's doing the HR stuff for Google right now, and he was at a college campus taking questions. And someone asked, you know, I'm currently doing computer science with a math minor. And, you know, this is what I feel like I should be doing to be working for you guys someday, but it's really difficult. Would it be better if I you know, maybe did something like economics and math instead. Of course, with economics, it's, that's just crazy easy. Um, but uh, the Google guy Excuse said, no. Excuse me? <laughs> I, I was, what? Did my sarcasm not come through there? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. um, but no, the Google guy said it's better if you just push yourself, even if you're like a, a B student in computer science, that's going to be better than an A student in economics for the type of people we're looking for. So mm. I don't know, keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to kind of push yourself harder than you might feel comfortable. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's, that's good advice. You branch out as much as possible. Of course, I have no experience with any of that. Uh, so I'm glad that you gentlemen had some, uh, some worthwhile contributions. And Jason, good luck. As you are applying to colleges. And, and don't take summer courses, man. Come on. Enjoy your summers. Yeah, that is a really good call. I'm, I'm with Steven on that, of course. It's... Or intern or something, but yeah. don't stay in the library all summer. Definitely. And enjoy college. Everyone says it's the best years of your life. Everyone is right. Maybe that's why my life sucks so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say one thing to Jason. Actually, two things. Number one, if you want a program, just start. Don't yes. wait to yeah. go to school. Go to your local, um, uh, what's it called, uh, 
Barnes and Noble store mm -hmm. and purchase an O'Reilly book on iOS programming or Android pr programming and just start. Uh, don't wait for anybody. Also, what you study in college, it's not really important, okay? I had a Fact. major in chemistry and a minor in biology. I used to work as a financial analyst, and now I write about <laughs> smartphones, okay? So you tell me, like, is it important? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As many folks know, my, my degree is in acting, and that's the stereo my, chemistry most of, of my <laughs> most of my experience lies in that field. So yeah, you you ruined it, Michael. I was going to say that you got a degree in underwater basket weaving. That's but... that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under I've never heard that variation on the basket weaving thing. That's no, a good. Isn't one. that what it always is? No, just yeah, basket I weaving. So too. Uh, yeah. that's cool. Experience, 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 Jason. Just work your ass off. There you go. That's good advice. All right, here we go. This is the final piece of email for this episode, and it is my favorite piece of email because it comes from a friend of mine. Personal assistant apps are very cool, writes Ed Carden. I like Google now quite a bit, and I know a lot of people that use Siri a fair amount as well. Microsoft, though, has really taken these to the next level, geekiness-wise, with Cortana. <laughs> Halo dorks all over must be pretty stoked about being able to have their favorite hot, practically naked blue chick reading off their web queries, <laughs> calendar appointments, and so forth. She's just an animated circle, Ed. Uh, so <laughs> my question to the podcasters is this. If you could have anyone, be it a real person or character, be the voice of your personal assistant app, who would it be? <laughs> I imagine oh, for Michael, and Ed has my number, like, of course. I imagine for Michael it would be Majel Barrett, the voice of the computer from Star Trek The Next Generation. Ed, thank you. I don't even have to answer this one now. Absolutely, it would be. Me, personally, I think I would probably go with my own voice. <laughs> yes, that's terribly narcissistic. I think the creepiest scenario, though, would be a dead relative. Oh, <laughs> anyway, oh my God. Anyway. Your is weird as hell, man. I, mean. uh, what, I told you. I went to college for acting. We're a bunch of weirdos. Who, Jesus or in some cases, like what would you choose? Ed Carden. Ed, you are a freaking gem for writing in, and I am, <laughs> I am just so tickled to be able to read your email. It, wonderful question. Guys, answer, my friend Ed, please. I have, I have three really high candidates. Wow. wow. Wow, you are the most complicated person ever. Okay, watch. I know. Uh, Morgan Freeman is is like way oh, up there. Sure, that's a good call. He's got to be hopping. That's too yeah. easy. Yeah. Right, Michael Caine. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Caine now or like seventies Michael Caine? Oh, Michael Caine now. His voice has changed Obsession, over the years. Sessions Young Man's Game. I can't. I yes. can't really do it. Yeah, Michael Caine now, and all of these come from The Dark Knight Rises, and I don't know why. <laughs> but wow, Tom cool. Hardy. Tom Hardy. Oh God! Only Tom Hardy, wait, Bane. Tom Hardy as, as Bane? Bane? No, as Bane has oh, to be God. as Bane. <laughs> as Bane. Whoa, <laughs> that would be horrifying. You'd have a heart attack in two days. It's cold outside. <laughs> Your punishment <laughs> must be more severe. <laughs> oh, Taylor, that's messed up. Stephen, do you have any, any other idea? I know Harry Carey popped into my head. But oh my like, god! I would get tired of that very quickly. So it would have to be the Will Ferrell Harry Carey. Just say me. cancel, and we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> this is doesn't this remind you of what was going on maybe, what five, yeah. seven years ago the with GPS, um, GPS navigators? Yeah, with like Danny DeVito reading your like directions. Darth here. Vader or Homer Simpson yeah. and all this. But it should happen. Like this is something that this is much more personal than that is. This 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 should be allowed. Uh, I heard that actually you can now retrain uh, OK Google to respond to something else. Somebody tweeted this at me. I didn't see this officially. Really? Yeah, but you can. It'll respond to a specific key command now. Uh, I need to confirm that. I just saw it on Twitter. But what about you, Stefan? What would your uh, your answer be? This is really easy. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, awesome. just okay. imagine Arnie like, you have to get out of your house now. There is a meeting. Michael, <laughs> now. remember to change your laundry. <laughs> Do you have an appointment at 9 o'clock with the dentist? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Get wow. to the chopper. I want to hear it. I want to hear you say it. No. Get to the chopper. <laughs> oh, we, the bridge is out. <laughs> fellas, we got to kickstart this thing. Uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and he was so down for it. I'm sure he would. 
<laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, I, I, Ed, I will throw a, a curveball your way, even though you've already answered the question for me. If I couldn't have Majel Barrett, because sadly she's passed away, I would have Judy Durand record it, because she's the Cardassian computer voice in Deep Space Nine. So there you go. I would have a Star Trek computer voice either way. And this is wonderful. I like this. Why don't you Must write in? Money. Listeners, uh, why don't you tell us who you would have? This is a great question, and I think we should run a poll. Stephen, what do you think? Um, should, that's not a bad idea. We should solicit suggestions. It's going to get out of hand so quickly. That's all right. That's good. We like we like that degree have, of fun. I have to leave the add your own suggestion open, and it's just going to go off the rails. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's perfect. I think we got a great idea there, Ed. Thank you uh, once again. You are a gem, and. Uh, Gentlemen, thank the four of you. We're coming up on the two-hour mark, which means we're about ready to shove off. Stefan, it's got to be about four in the morning over there where you are. It is 11.38. I'm pretty good. So Nice. Yeah, nice. Scotch has a lot of calories. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, for all the scotch you've, you've downed, you must have to go uh, piss like a racehorse. Uh, it's a joke. I'm not really drinking any scotch. God damn it. Oh, well, it's actually bourbon. <laughs> you know, it's actually shattered my back. illusions. <laughs> St- Stefan, have you enjoyed your, your return to the weekly? Have Absolutely. You- I enjoy it greatly because I'm usually a very antisocial person. And when I hang out with people in the real world, the last thing I want to talk about is smartphones and technology. Yes. So th- this is a bit of a new experience for me. Kind of a neutral um, ground, too. Yeah. So yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. Good. Well, we enjoyed the hell out of it, and I'll look forward to having you on again. And uh, tell everyone, remind everyone out there where they can find you if they want your insightful, incisive remarks in their lives. So, yeah, I tweet about every hour uh, at <laughs> what the bit, but the weekend is coming up, and I go offline for the weekend because it's the Good weekend. for you. You are um, awesome. And I have a website, tabdump.com. I update that Monday to Friday. So, of course, the weekend's coming up. I'm not going to be on the Internet. And uh, that's about it. I use Facebook, but it's just for family. And Google Plus can go to hell. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Taylor, Stephen, I want to say to you, uh, have a wonderful weekend, the both of you. Taylor, happy birthday. I want to let you know that, um, you know, soon you'll be able to drink legally and things. And (laughs) that's going to be really exciting. You're on the cusp of a new adventure. Can rent a car, maybe? Yeah, yeah, rent a car. I I still can't rent a car. (laughs) How old do you have to be to rent a car? Well, you know, you can you can rent, can a, car. rent a car. You just you just need it at reduced rate. You, like at twenty five, yeah, you get reduced rates or something. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm, I'll be twenty four, so I have another year of getting slapped every time you go into a car rental place. Oh man! Pretty soon you like the slaps. Hey, and now there are tornadoes in Charlotte. Yay! <laughs> All right, Taylor, get to your basement. Stephen, thank you for joining us on the show to answer sure, listener sure. mail. And uh, we will see all you guys later on. That's going to do it for this episode of The Weekly. Thank you for joining us, everyone out there, and for staying with us this entire time. And thank you for all your listener mail every week. We love it, and we read every piece sent to us at podcast at pocketnow.com. Once again, find us on Twitter. Stephen is at Stephen Shank. Taylor is at Casper Tech. Steve, uh, Stefan is at What the bit and i am at captain two phones pocket now is at twitter instagram facebook and google plus it's pocket now and all those places and if you enjoyed the podcast please leave us a review on itunes xbox music stitcher and wherever else podcasts are heard thank you so much for listening as always you're the best audience a podcaster could ask for and we'll be back with more mobile tech talk next week So Taylor uh, it will be on in a second, but you have to know how – no, he's not. He canceled that call request because he's an asshole. I'm also in a very grumpy mood right no now, shit, and I don't really? know why. I couldn't tell. I couldn't I tell don't... that you were in a grumpy mood for no reason, which never happens. I'm pretty well. I have no idea who's asking who questions because I can't <laughs> see either of you, and it's, Good. it's whatever. Well, Let's you don't just... do the voicemail and video, do you? Hell no. See, I'm the one that sounds like Kermit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, well, now that we've got that established, let's kick this shit off. <laughs>